guys, this is Amy Leo and Meg on the web. And I've been in California for the past two weeks and I've been around a lot of fellow singer songwriters and musicians. And one thing that I keep hearing over and over again from folks is that deep down they really don't feel that they're good enough. And that can manifest itself in so many ways. You know, I've come across so many folks that have been sitting on albums for like five to seven years and they just haven't released it yet. And, and underneath that is that feeling that they're not good enough. You know, the crazy thing about this is this is just a thought that isn't actually based in reality. You know, you don't see animals going around acting this way. <laughs> like if you have a little wiener dog and then you have a husky dog, you don't see the wiener dog kind of thinking to himself, man, I'm just not as good as that husky because I can't pull sleds and I don't have that beautiful fur coat. <laughs> they just don't do that. So that's one thing I, I have been seeing a lot of, and I'm guilty of this too. I mean, there's so many times when I've been stuck in a perfectionist type of mode because I've been afraid of being criticized or afraid that, you know, my work isn't good enough. But here's the truth of it as I'm coming to see it is that, <laughs> number one, that's not true. You know, there's no such thing as not being good enough. And number two, the only way to get better at a skill or a craft is to actually be in action and do it. So that's kind of interesting. The second thing I've been hearing a lot of is that people are comparing themselves to themselves. So they're comparing themselves to some future ideal version of themselves down the road. And because they aren't yet that person, they get really down on themselves. You know, and I can relate to this too. You know, there's been quite a few times where I have to catch myself, you know, because I'm thinking, oh, I really wish I was on the radio and, and impacting, you know, thousands if not millions of people yet. And I'm still largely unknown. And the chitter chatter will just go on and on and on if, if you really let it. And if you start believing and indulging in what those thoughts are. Now, I think this story will hit it home that I was at ASCAP in LA and Al Black was interviewing Bill Withers. And Bill Withers is a wonderful songwriter. You know, he's the one that wrote Lean On Me and uh, things like that. So Al Black was interviewing Bill Withers and this young, pretty gal stood up to ask Bill Withers a question. And she said, you know, I, I think when I'm in the Hall of Fame and I have lots of platinum records, then I'll really feel like I'm, I've made it, like I'm good enough. And, you know, she said, I'm just really worried that it will never be enough for me. You know, I, and I'm not enjoying myself right now, is what she said to Bill Withers. And then he said kind of a snarky comment, which those of you who are at, at the ASCAP Expo know what I'm talking about, but I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> so after he said this little snarky uh, comment, he, he just asked her, like, why are you doing it if you don't enjoy it anymore? But I'd like to go further than why are you doing it. I'd also like to bring about the point that it's your own thinking and your own opinions of what you're doing that's causing you not to like it in that moment. So after I got back from the first music conference, I got on the call with my mentor and I shared with her, you know, what we did. And it was such a great environment of, you know, really positive, awesome fellow singer-songwriters and we all were writing these commitment letters because we're like, no, we're not going to take our music as a hobby anymore. We commit to do it, you know, every day or share it in, you know, every way we can and, and things like that. And the one thing that she asked me, you know, is if you knew you were going to fail, would you keep doing your music? And without a doubt, I said, yes, of course. You know, it's something that I allow myself to feel very joyful doing. It's something I enjoy. And then she went on to say, you know, Amy, there's nothing wrong with where you are right now in your musical career. And I was like, hmm, okay, there might be some merit to this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, for instance, how many times do we, for instance, give ourselves a deadline and then we get really stressed out and anxiety ridden that we're not going to make that deadline. 
but in fact, we were the ones that created that deadline. So I mean, it's just, it's just crazy how neurotic we all are. You know, we're creating these standards and expectations for ourselves. And then when we fall short of our own expectations, we get really down and out on ourselves. And, you know, we don't have to function that way. We truly don't. And that's the beauty of being human in a way, is we get to see and believe pretty much whatever we want to believe. So maybe this is getting too woo-woo, so I'll give a more concrete example. When I was at the first music conference, the guy that was running it asked, what is your music worth? And I couldn't put a numerical value on it. And I thought, well, this is kind of weird. Like, I guess I, <laughs> I'm thinking that my music isn't worth money. And you know, that that's, you know, at the heart of it, I don't believe that's really true. So I really got thinking about it and I thought, well, this isn't a really thoughtful opinion of myself to have. So I was like, well, if I think of thoughts or opinions as snowflakes, I'm just holding on to this one opinion of myself or this one interpretation. If I let go of that snowflake or that thought, there's thousands, if not millions of other snowflakes or thoughts to, to grab onto. So I think for me, as I continue to keep learning about what it means to be human, it isn't so much for me about making myself feel bad about having certain thoughts or feel bad about taking certain actions or feel bad about not making deadlines or not being on the radio yet. And it isn't about working really hard to change those views. It's about allowing my mind to be clear enough that other thoughts or more positive or empowering perceptions can come through. And when this starts to happen, it's really amazing. The peace of mind and the simplicity that you start to feel towards things that in the past you may have thought were very complex or very serious and you kind of look at them with a lot of humor. So for the past two weeks, it's really been me being more of an observer of life and, and of how different people have totally different ways of viewing the world. And that creates different feelings for them and actually different realities. I mean, it's, it's truly fascinating. So I guess the take home for this one is next time that you feel, you know, bad about yourself, because either you're comparing yourself to someone else that's quote unquote more successful than you, or you're comparing yourself to some ideal future version of yourself that doesn't exist. I just think it's important to realize that every single human being is going to have low moods and insecure thoughts. But what's really helpful is not taking the opinions of yourself seriously when you have those thoughts. I mean, even the greatest singers and athletes in the world, sure, they come off as confident, but they've got low moods too. Everybody poops <laughs> and everyone has bad days where they don't feel things are going so right. So I'd love to hear from you underneath the blog if anything's coming up for you while I'm talking about this subject of comparing yourself to other people or comparing yourself to yourself, <laughs> to your potential, we'll say, and that's such a, a loaded word, you know? Because when we get down to it, I mean, we're all okay as we are right now. There's one thing that we're always in control of and that's our well-being it's always intact no matter what the world is bringing to us or what our circumstances are there really is an inner peace that's always accessible and it isn't hard work to access that again it, it occurs or has been occurring for me when i allow all the clutter in my head to just like dissipate and not take it so seriously you know how else can can you describe when you go to developing countries like i've been to peru and the people there are, tr are truly happy. I mean, spending time with them, or when I was in India, spending time with folks in very, as we would determine, very poor, poverty-ridden environments. But they're smiling and they're enjoying learning about you and they're enjoying their kids and playing in the river. And 
So even in dire circumstances, there always is an inner well-being and an inner health that's always accessible to all of us. And I know my fellow musicians will be like, oh my goodness, what is she, what is she on? What is she talking about in her high horse? But it's true. There's so many, un, there is so much unnecessary suffering um, that, you know, that we do to ourselves. And it's innocent. And I'm not saying to put blame on ourselves because I do it too. But basically, you're being called to your passion for a reason. If you want more resources like this, straight to your inbox, you can head on over to amyleo.com, sign up for the email updates, and then you get these little bad boys twice a month. Also, if you want to join in on this conversation, you can find that blog post at amyleo.com slash free tools, and you're also going to get to hear from Meg if you go over to that free tools page. Until next time, big love, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.